My name is Gail Spring and I'm the Adjunct Associate Professor of Scientific Photography at RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia. I've worked in forensic and biomedical photography for over 35 years and have encountered many imaging problems in that area. I'd like to share with you now a few tutorials and demonstrations addressing some of those issues that I've discovered. In this demonstration, we're going to look at higher magnification photography. Uh, images uh, certainly above uh, life size, 1x, uh, and in the range of, uh, in this setup, we have about six times, six or seven times magnification. I'm not going to dwell much on how to set this up, although I will explain what you see in front of you, but what I would like to share with you are a couple of interesting techniques of how we can make this exposure correct easier than we used to, say, in the, in the film days, for sure. Electronics has really added to the ability of a camera and a flash unit to talk to each other and actually determine the exposure by itself. And I'll show you a couple of very interesting ways to do this. But first, I'll explain very briefly what you're looking at here. Uh, we have a, a, a camera uh, set on a bellows. The camera is the uh, Nikon DF camera. Uh, and one of the advantages of that is that uh, it actually works with some of the lenses that have the aperture control. Some of the old lenses work, uh, work well on it. So that's uh, the camera body. It's now connected to the bellows uh, with an extension tube. And the extension tube just simply moves the camera back slightly away from the bellows. Because you'll find that some of the new modern, uh, or the, the new cameras with a battery compartment that uh, extends underneath won't allow it to actually go in a bellows. So by the simple use of an extension tube like this, you can put the camera away from the bellows. This is the bellows unit itself. This happens to be a Nikon bellows, but uh, there are many types of bellows on the market that fit with uh, your cameras. The lens is actually an old 35 millimeter F2 lens. And to achieve higher magnification, we actually have to reverse the position of the lens. So now, this little silver ring located right here is a reverse adapter, which means that I can take the lens and point it towards the camera. The rear of the lens is actually pointed away from the camera, and this little silver ring on the back is a BR2 ring used primarily just as a bit of a, a, a lens uh, protection and also any uh, stray light that's coming in from the side. It's like a lens shade. That's the bellows with the camera sitting on top of something else I'd like to share with you, which is the XY slider uh, available in various places. And what it does is it allows you to move the camera forward and back. It allows you to move the camera from side to side in very, very fine adjustments. And what we'll find doing high magnification work that moving the camera a half a millimeter will throw things in and out of focus. So it's very critical that you have control over that. Controlling the subject, I highly recommend that again, going back to the standard lab jack, allows you to move subjects up and down quite easily. And once again, one of my favorite objects, the FISO arm, allows me to move the FISO uh, arm and position things precisely where I want them. That's the setup as you see it. Now the problem that we have uh, in many cases is actually determining exposure. That's the biggest problem. Uh, as the higher the magnification we get, the more it affects the, the exposure, and we can do it mechanically and manually, uh, or we can let the electronics take over. And today's electronics on flash units are absolutely brilliant. So what we see here, and an example I'm gonna give you in a second, is we have uh, the Nikon R1C1 uh, a macro flash kit, uh, which consists of this little unit which speaks to these small units. These small units now are controlled by the camera controlling the uh, commander, the commander being the interpreter between the camera and the flash, and as we take a picture, it will automatically uh, correct for the exposure uh, and cut the flash off at the proper time. The other thing is wireless. So we can now take one or two, three, four, and we can actually position these around the subject uh, and instantly then see our results on the back, which will undoubtedly be pretty close to perfect exposure. What I have here is a scale. The scale is showing, 
uh, the magnification that I'm going to eventually get at the rear of the camera. And I wanted to briefly uh, discuss that because if I move the bellows in and out, I will change the magnification of my uh, subject. If I'm shooting a series of things and say I always want to shoot them at the same magnification or I need to know what the magnification is, I very first shoot a picture of the scale. Once I have a picture of the scale, I can then count the number of millimeters on the rear of the camera and by dividing the, the number that I photographed into the number that's known, usually by the manufacturer's specifications, that will tell me what the magnification is, uh, actually is. Now, I've set this up uh, previously, and so I'm going to actually take a picture of the scale for you. Uh, I'm going to fine focus it, but again, I point out, I'm going to focus it by moving the, the entire system back and forth. So I will photograph this. I must open the aperture, leave it wide open, so I can have enough light. In this case, I'm going to use a small torch just to see it a little bit better. I can position now the scale in the frame. I now focus. I select an f-stop. I can select almost any f-stop. It's at 2.0, uh, um, which is wide open. But if I close this down, say to f11, I take my flash, I simply hold it somewhere close to the subject, take a picture, I get a right exposure, a correct exposure, and now I can also count the number of millimeters back here and again compare it to the known number that I have. At that point, I don't want pictures of scales, I want a picture of my subject. If I simply remove my scale and decide what I'm going to be photographing, this leaf for example, if I now put it in approximately that same position, open my aperture up again so I can see through the camera, focus on the subject. If I have not moved the relative position of the bellows, I am at exactly the same magnification that I was with the scale. I can con then confirm that by putting a picture of the scale along with the picture of the uh, leaf in this, in this example. Now once again, what I can do is simply choose an f-stop because it will automatically talk, the camera will talk to the commander unit which will talk to the, the flash, and it will automatically make the proper exposure for whatever f-stop that I choose. I'll select an f-stop, I'll position a light, and again, wherever I, I, I think it's going to work properly for me, take the picture, and once again, I have a picture six times or so magnification of that leaf. I can use two flashes if I like. I can use several of these and illuminate them in different ways. And in fact, what I'd like to do, I'm going to illuminate one directly from the back to show the translucency of that leaf. What you see is a complete full 35 millimeter frame of the leaf. So I can put the flash directly behind the leaf and now I have a picture transilluminated through the leaf. If I don't want a fully transilluminated image, I can put some from the back, some from the front. That's the beauty of the electronic system and the way the cameras speak electronically and wirelessly in this case to make my pictures consistently good exposures. Now we just looked at uh, uh, a photograph taken using the wireless commander unit, but we're going to add another flash unit and a little twist uh, on this by adding a fiber optic. Through this cable connected to the flash, we can now connect that to the camera's fl uh, flash shoe, remotely then flash the unit. So the flash will now uh, go off whenever I take a picture. However, what I would like to do now is connect a fiber optic, which is this device here. So light's going to come out of the flash, it's going to go through the fiber optic, and I can now point this in whatever direction I like. Now I'll lay this down carefully.
open the aperture, which you have to do to do any fine focusing. It's in focus. I can now close the aperture to whatever I decide I'd like my depth of field to be and hold the fiber optic in the position that I think will be lit properly and take the picture and voila, I have a lovely exposed photograph going from the camera, through the cord, into the flash, around the uh, fiber optic, and then being read by the camera, cutting the flash off at the proper time for the proper exposure. As a brief summary of what we've just seen and, and highlighting a few of the important points, um, to do high magnification work uh, and to get your exposures uh, correct, it's really good to have a camera and a system that talks to each other, um, either uh, connected or uh, through some radio frequency. So flash with um, uh, cable is excellent, but also the wireless units work very, very well. The camera needs to be attached to bellows and the appropriate lens, I would say, needs to be attached. But just as a side note, using a standard 35 millimeter lens will allow you to get up to six or seven, eight times magnification, but you have to reverse it. So reversing rings would be handy. Positioning and moving the camera uh, in very small increments is in very important, and therefore anything that can help you with that, this XY slider works beautifully, as well as a lab jack letting things go up and down smoothly, and of course some uh, type of, of, of arm, articulated arm, FISO arms, uh, which allow minor movement as well. Because the camera now is talking to the flash and determining the exposure automatically, the f-stop that I manually choose becomes somewhat irrelevant to the exposure. It does affect the uh, depth of field, however. So the smaller the aperture, the greater the depth of field, and you just have to work with those various uh, f-stops to see what kind of depth of field will give you uh, what you want and also give the camera the same exposure. The last thing that I would like to mention, which is not uh, illustrated in this demonstration very well, but everything needs to be rock solid. You don't want vibration and therefore setting your units up on a, a sturdy table with a, very little vibration and also waiting those few seconds after you're set up and ready to go, waiting those few seconds for everything to settle down before you take the picture and you're guaranteed with high quality, perfectly exposed, high magnification uh, photographs.